Hello everybody, my name is Jordan, I'm a music teacher, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about nine Bach pieces from beginner, intermediate, and then all the way up to more advanced that you can learn. So if you're a fan of classical music and you're just looking to learn, stick around for the whole video. If you're someone who's looking for some beginner pieces, I'll have timestamps, and in the description, every single piece has sheet music provided. Skip around and see which pieces fit best for you. We'll be analyzing them just a little bit and then listening to them so you can see which pieces are best for you. So a little bit about Bach. He was a composer during the Baroque era, which is a long time ago. It's one of the earliest eras in music and it was really an age of discovery for many composers at the time a lot of the western ideas that we have in regards to like cadences modulations um, song structure can be attributed to many of these baroque era composers especially Bach he really paved the way for a lot of the ideas that we have now he's really well known for his well-tempered clavier which is a um, book of 24 preludes and fugues he also wrote the Goldberg variations and I actually have a copy of the well-tempered clavier which is 48 preludes and fugues you can get it on Amazon I think it was like 30 bucks and it is awesome because it has so much useful music in here and the fugue is actually a composition style that Bach is very well known for and he basically pioneered it so all it is is it's derived from counterpoint which means we have two melodies working at the same time so if you remember being in elementary school or middle school you would sing row 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 your boat someone else would follow you singing row 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 your boat and even though you're starting in different places the melodies fit together at certain points so essentially counterpoint is just two melodies and this is just taking multiple voices putting them together but, but fugues are a little bit different as we will have one voice and then usually that same exact melody will repeat while the first voice plays a different melody but somehow they fit together perfectly and sometimes Bach will even go up to four voices and when you think about the complexity of it it really is incredible so the first piece we're going to look at is a beginner piano piece I wouldn't say like a brand new beginner but you have a general understanding of where the keys are on the piano you can read music a little bit this is a great piece for you and the piece is prelude in C major one of the things that makes this piece great for beginners is that it copies the same rhythms over and over again so you play the left hand rhythm the right hand plays and then you usually repeat it also from a composition perspective this piece is a gold mine for chord analysis as you'll go from a c chord to the d chord to a g7 chord back to the c chord and it's got really really useful modulations to um, minor keys and to close related keys that you can use as a study piece and it's really quite easy to play so let's listen The next piece we're gonna look at is Musette in D major. Now this piece is really cool. It gives us lots of practice working on our octaves in the left hand, and it also gives us a really catchy melody to play in the right hand. And then we also have this cool little um, interlude section where our hands are playing together. So it's a good chance for you to start exercising your left hand as well. And the melody sounds really cool. So let's go ahead and give this one a listen. third beginner piece that we're going to look at and this is where it starts to get a little bit harder is box gavotte in g major and so this piece really isn't that hard when you look at it what makes it challenging is there's some more advanced phrasing and when i say phrasing um just like how humans speak we have sentences there's a start and there's a finish we go up and our voice even has like inflections when we speak so phrasing and music is where the melody starts it's doing something and then it comes to an end and then we go to the next melody kind of like that and so this piece uh just playing it's pretty pretty simple but it does have some pretty advanced phrasing in it where you can take that step to the next level it Now we are getting into the intermediate section. This is Bach's Gavotte in G minor, and it's actually really similar to the last one difficulty-wise. It's just a little bit longer, and some of the parts are a little bit more challenging to learn. It also has lots of thirds, um, which is movements in the right hand where you're going through thirds, which is a pretty advanced concept uh, when you're first starting out. So technique-wise, it's just gonna challenge you a little bit more. So let's go ahead and listen. And the next 
next intermediate piece we're going to learn about is box invention in F major. And I love this piece. This is one of my favorite Bach pieces. And if you're not quite ready to play fugues or some of his more advanced pieces, an invention's a great place to start. And this is so funny. He actually wrote the inventions for like young children who are starting out piano. But as uh, we have advanced as a society, our children are not playing like that anymore. So this is a piece that I would give to a student who's been playing for two or three years. And it starts to explore some of these contrapuntal ideas that we talked about. So the left hand is a lot more sophisticated in this piece and honestly is leading sometimes and the right hand follows and vice versa. So there's this melody and sometimes the right hand takes the melody, sometimes the left hand takes the melody. And if you play it fast, it takes some really hard technique to play it at the speed it goes. last intermediate piece we're going to talk about, and this is taking us into the advanced section, is Bach's Fugue in C minor. Now this piece is really iconic and it sounds incredible. Whenever we play it, you'll understand why. So this is our first example of you play a melody and then the left hand copies the melody exactly. And it's a really complicated melody and putting them together is really challenging for everybody. And what's especially challenging about the fugue is you have to make sure that the voice that has the main melody is singing out. So sometimes your left hand has it, sometimes it's a combination of both hands, and you have to be very intentional about how you play the keyboard. Right, now we are into the advanced category. Congratulations if you're looking at this piece. This next one, Box Fugue in G minor, very similar to the Fugue in C minor, but this one just takes a little bit more of a challenge. And it's funny, you actually almost only find this one played on the organ, even though we mostly will learn them on the piano. Funny enough, during the Baroque era, the piano did not exist yet. So if you look at a lot of box music, It'll traditionally be played on the harpsichord, which is like a piano, but it plucks the strings, whereas a piano hits the strings with a hammer, giving us a broader dynamic range, or the organ, which was also around during the Broke era. So we're about to listen to this piece, and we're actually going to hear it on the organ instead of a piano. And the melody of this piece is particularly haunting, so when you hear it on an organ, it sounds absolutely breathtaking. Next we have Bach's Goldverd Variations number 20. Much like the Well-Tempered Clavier, it's just a book of some of Bach's advanced pieces, and I just picked one. They're all pretty hard. This is actually one of the easier ones, and this is just, um, it brings in more endurance because it's a longer piece. It has some really advanced technique in there, and it's just a little bit of a step up from his fugues. Then finally, we have Bach's Piano Concerto in D minor. So, a piano concerto is actually where the piano is a part of the orchestra temporarily. So, the piano will play something and it will be accompanied by the orchestra. So, this piece is long. Most places I was looking is between 20 and 25 minutes long, depending on how the player plays it, which is a long time to play the piano. So, even though when you look at it, it's not the hardest piece you've ever seen, but the technique required over that long of a time, the concentration you need and the endurance is where this piece becomes very advanced. And playing it by itself isn't too bad, but playing with an orchestra is really challenging because you have to follow the conductor and you need to be aware of what's happening around you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy. Bach is one of my favorite composers ever, and I love listening to his music, and I love studying this stuff and thinking about it. So if you like this kind of stuff, I want to make more videos like this in the future. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.